was only in at the three, we left it no. slightly later. No, so we had to keep an eye on that. So I'm going to need someone to tell us maybe when it's 10 to 3 or something. Should I do it? Yeah, do you want I to also, do that? I also have watches on teacher time. So it'll be like four minutes back. <laughs> So what time is it now? Eighteen minutes past. So we just do about half half an hour. -ish. Yep. If you want to, we probably won't do questions because I don't, well we could do, but it doesn't really come up on the recording. So. But you can do. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I know that. <laughs> I was just trying to explain that. It may be that I, if I don't say, does anyone have any questions, that's not because I'm not interested. It's because it doesn't, because it kind of, you know, backs of heads and you won't be able to maybe hear your voices. For the, yeah, for the viewers. You could go up to the camera and say it. <laughs> <laughs> Some, but you it's also, the or you could read yeah, the questions. Yeah. yeah. That's good, that's good moderation, okay, all right then, cool. So, is that okay, James? We'll just we'll do that now. Um, right, so, uh, hello everybody, welcome to Arnold Feeney. Uh, my name is uh, Jamie Eastman, I'm the curator of performance here, and uh, you join us on the fourth day of our four days uh, festival, sort of a micro festival, really, of uh, performance, uh, sort of, Installation as well as performance, and uh, four days of consecutive events, really. Uh, and this includes artist talks. And uh, joining me today, I have two artists who have been performing uh, their works at four days. Uh, this is Barry Sykes to my immediate left, and this is Edwin Burgess. Um, thank you. Um, so, we're just going to talk a little bit about the works that we presented during four days, um, and then really. The sort of general theme of this talk is sort of the influence of theatre, um, perhaps sort of not specifically on these works, but just perhaps in your in your sort of body of work, really. Um, and also, uh, this the, I should explain a little bit more, which is that this particular edition of Four Days is just has a sort of focus on theatre, has a sort of underlying theme of theatre and theatricality. Um, and one of the reasons that brought uh, these guys together is because. To my mind, uh, the work that we're going to talk about that Barry presented is sort of expanded theatre, and the work that we're going to talk about that Edward presented is expanded opera. There are other things as well, but they're, they're sort of both quite sort of interesting uh, pieces of work for, for those reasons in this context. So, I'm just going to read a short line from your bio, Barry, and we're going to start with you. Uh, Barry Sykes has a process based practice involving sculpture, photography, video works on paper, writing, talks, and performance. Um, and am I right in thinking that this performance came about via an uh, artist residency at the ICIA in Bath? Is that right or not? No. Oh, right. um, I, I, it, it was GNU, but I sort of, um, I haven't really started that residency properly yet, so we haven't had a chance to develop it with them. But it, it started, I mean it kind of actually started with um, with a, I did a, a, a small like, one-week project at the motorcycle showroom in Stokes Croft in Bristol, and for that, um, I did a it was like a little one-week residency, just sort of meet people there, work with the team at the showroom, and work with people, meet some other people in Bristol, and I put, I sort of displayed a few odds and ends of things in a really informal kind of way in, in one of their sort of off-project off spaces, and that, and that was the first time I, I I I sort of displayed my this funny old collection of time-out pages, all of which feature some form of advert for the woman in black. Um, so maybe, okay, so I just, for the benefit of anyone who hasn't seen it, um, you basically made a performance lecture about your interest in the long-running West End ghost play. Mm. Um, and, you know, what's kind of, I think, pretty, uh, important about the piece is that you're quite explicit throughout that you're interested in the play um, and the art that you're making from this interest is very much in so it's this sort of, I don't know, there's something going on that's very live, uh, or sure, um, and it feels to me like it's a little bit like a blog as a performance, um, you know, 
So I don't mean mm -hmm. that in a kind of that's. Uh, it's sort of uh, the stages that you're perhaps taking the audience through. Yeah, is something that is, you know, mm. it's, it's all contained within the live moment. Yeah, sort of uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't blog, so I don't. I couldn't say whether that sure. feels <laughs> like it. But I suppose. But I would say that it's not. I mean, in a way, I'm doing. I'm showing you the process of making of it. But I sort of feel like. I'm kind of just switching the end for the middle, and like the middle, I'm showing you the middle, but actually you know what, the middle is the end now, the end is the middle. Just to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but, but maybe the middle bit is the end point. So let's, let, you know, it was a kind of itch I wanted to scratch to see if I could present the, the, or like the, the beginnings of something as, as an end, as, a, as, as, a, as, as enough. Um. Could you, I'm going to ask you your first official question now, Mr. Uh, can you describe a little bit more about what you're doing on a meta level with this work? Um, but then it, I'm just going to show a picture of you not doing this piece, but doing something. That's really meta. Yeah. Um, That's a different talk, yeah, yeah. But what I find really great about uh, <laughs> My this <old> piece <laughs> and that piece <laughs> yeah. is that. Um, Regardless of the meta side of it, you seem to be really keen to make a connection with your audience, and you seem to be quite. Uh, I don't know. You, 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 there's a sort of genial present presenter mm -hmm. style that you kind of your performer style maybe in these yeah. types of works, and I'm yeah. interested to know, you know, why you why the geniality? I suppose. But I, but maybe that maybe that links to the sort of meta thing too, because it's it's. It's something as I've done more talking about things, and I've sort of stumbled from realizing that sometimes it's easier to get an idea across by telling someone that idea rather than making something out of that idea and seeing if that's enough and seeing if what happens there and what's missing and what's what you can do with that. But the, in the talking about it, you sort of have a you know it's kind of a it's kind of a um, you get to by by doing that sort of the the, the I know I really like the point using just uh, trying to generate points of laughter as a kind of recognition. So, like, if you're laughing, then you then that might suggest that you've got the idea. I mean, it's in a way it's a really crude way of establishing whether the audience are on side or not. But then I quite like that. And then suddenly, if someone hears laughter, it changes the tone of the audience. So you can sort of play with that a little bit, and then it gives me a license to maybe do some more boring bits, not funny bits. But then you find people are laughing more at the boring bits than the than the killer line I thought I'd inserted into the first section. Um, but then that's okay because I'm enjoying the playing around with the two. But that, it feels like that, you know, for me anyway, the, the dynamic of talking about stuff like that is as, is as elaborate as the content, if you like. It seems, I'm, sti I'm, hope I'm trying to stitch them together sort of seamlessly, really, and, and that you might ho hopefully question both. And then maybe the, and the Content and delivery are switching around too. So one is that the delivery actually becomes the content. In, in in this piece, you sort of say on a couple of occasions, you know, because there's a PowerPoint. This bit is mm -hmm. going to be taking the audience through a PowerPoint mm -hmm. presentation for a large part of it, and you're quite open about that. And you kind of sometimes it doesn't quite go to plan, and you just yeah. so it's so it's you know it does function. You know, we kind of, I guess we kind of call these things performance lectures, but it does sort of function like a presentation mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you know, I might have to do. Sometimes. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, and I wondered if that was a format that you, uh, yeah, you've done it once or twice before, but mm -hmm. is it something that you, yeah, why this vehicle, I suppose? And, and why it seems to, it kind of suits my skill set, I right. suppose. I mean, even then, PowerPoint can outwit me on, on, many, on the occasions. But um, it, yeah, it seems to it, it's like it feels like it, it's different. If PowerPoint at the moment feels like a, a material to work with, um, and the, and the, that sort of presentation, and that you can because the, you're they're familiar. We've watched people. We've watched them. You know, they have a, they have a beginning and end. You know, there's no you can't really waver off them. They're quite they're quite rigid. So then that's quite a nice narrow format to kind of ricochet ideas within. Um, is it like your script? Yeah. In in the way I was trying to, as I was developing this, I realised I'd 
I, it, if I um, if I let the PowerPoint lead me, actually, if I, it was much easier once I if I sort of as I kind of whittled away at the script and then and put more of it into the structure of the PowerPoint, then I could just follow what was on screen and do, and that would lead me through it. I mean, it worked and it didn't work in that way because also I was talking off the top of my head, and that, that became this sort of that, that was also another thing to wrestle with when you're up there, which I was. The point of which my, my deliberate under rehearsal for the weekend for the, for the, all each of the attempts was was to to accentuate that kind of wrestling with your own ideas in the moment. Because I mean, we should explain that you do it more than you did it three times. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah the preview, the matinee, and the end of the run. Yeah, yeah. And did they feel like by the time you got to the last one, did you feel that you? Perhaps didn't need the script in the same way. Yeah, yeah. I, really, I, be, I, I barely looked at it actually, and that went th that happened through it, and, which you know I'm not, I'm not sure how significant that is, but it, it, it was um, it was a line of progress. And you do a bit of acting, don't you, at the end? Yes. I don't know. That's not spoiled. No, 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 no. I did a two-hour acting class last Tuesday. Yeah. 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 And, but you also include <coughs> clips of you in this two-hour acting class. Yes. In piece as well. Yeah, it's um, it's the so I filmed the whole thing, and then as I was going through the footage on Tuesday evening, getting ready for the to bring it here, um, I realised that the most interesting bit seemed to be not um, with Michael talking and me, not the acting. I didn't, it's, it suddenly felt really wrong to show any of me acting on film. So um, you're just what you're just watching the camera on me, listening to Michael tell me how to be a better communicator because we the, the, the lesson was really about communication because he teaches that as well as acting. I mean he, he has skills to pass that on. He's not a professional acting teacher but he's a, a successful professional actor. In the course of that often he's, he's uh, passing those skills on in a, in other environments. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you is uh, that you use you know, within this piece, you you're kind of showing us your a collection, if you will, uh, of of clippings from Time Out, mm -hmm. and you know, you're quite familiar with, I guess, sort of venue listings, theatre listings, and um, I guess I was just interested to maybe explore this idea of the everyday with you because mm -hmm. you everyone there's a frame of reference for everybody that watches this piece because most people. I would imagine are familiar with theatre listings or mm -hmm. kind of this idea of how they orientate themselves around in the world of entertainment. Sure, sure. Um, well also because you're, I guess you're giving, you know, perhaps it's all made up, but you're kind of giving us, or there's a sort of sense that the audience can see a little bit into your everyday life as mm -hmm. well. And I just, you know, and theatre in general is very concerned with the everyday and storytelling. Mm -hmm. I wondered mm -hmm. whether. Um, yeah, there was some level of connection with what you were doing there. I suppose possibly, but at the same time, there, it's not, you know, theatre in particular, even if it's verbatim theatre, is a completely fictitious, fictitious constructed version of everyday. This isn't even television or documentary. So you can't, you can't, however hard it tries, it really can't get that close to it as much as it might like. And likewise, in this, I think I'm. There's pointers to that. I mean, even the photograph in my bathroom is a computer-generated image, so it's not a. Um, uh, it, there's, there's still a. I'm still withholding. But, you know, it, 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 it's, it seems to be appropriate to be frank about things, but equally, it's a. You know, it is a performance. I don't go thinking that. Um, that you know, it, it's been delivered in a certain way, so there's a and in a certain place and format, so it's. Um, it, it's 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 there to be. Treated in, in a, as if you're looking at it in that way, rather than we were chatting down the pub or something. It's not as don't it's an illusion. I think to think that that's how I was speaking to people, perhaps. Um, the name of the piece is "It Must Be Told." Yes. And so, yeah, okay, I kind of, and you're talking. I don't think we can say what play you're talking about. But we, but we can say that it's a play that, um, in, you know, it's a, the play itself that you're talking about operates on a meta level because it features, it's a play about an actor. Yeah, uh, it's, actor. A, it's, a, it's a play within a play, yeah. yeah. And, you know, also I don't mention it because I'm, I'm, I'm not, 
I'm not really interested in the play. Like I'm not stu I'm not stud I'm not stud I, I know, I'm interested in everything in the structures around the play. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it's 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 not really because I love the plot, for example, or or I like think you know it's not Hamlet. It's not um, a piece of Beckett or something. This isn't although it's studied on GCSE curriculum. It's, this isn't really the most nutritious of theatrical kind of texts or productions, but that doesn't mean that. Which is kind of why it's easy for me to then pick around it because I can kind of choose the things that I think are, are valid, and mainly most of them are from the, the structure that enables the play to tell its story, whether that's the marketing or the staging or the introduction of characters or the scene setting at the very beginning. So, would it be fair to say that there's a. It's not it's the story of the play in its complete ethnographic mm. sense is what you're beginning to teasing out, you know. Like you say, the marketing, um, all of these things are important to you. Yeah. Perhaps this, this again, I can't say what the name of the play is, but um, the okay. what you do say in the piece is that this play was uh, almost put together, perhaps by accident, to save money, and there were sort of reasons in which the play kind of maybe came together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for the particular theatre that decided to make it at yeah. the time. Um, and so you're giving us, yeah, you give us, you give us a lot of the. That's yeah, I try to, but then it's kind of it's a memory exercise as well because if it's been unscripted, I, I, I give I give different bits of information at every time, which is which is something I was really interested in. That what what I'm kind of caught in the um, and the audience are, are um, limited by whatever happens to come to mind at the time, what's prompted by the image or what prompt, what, what I remember. So you get different bits. There's been key things I've left out of. I've managed to remember to give them one. But I've left out the other two. So and um, key. If you're if, if you're interested in the minutiae of the structure of a, of a play, um, so uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to move on to Edwin mm. now. And um, can we just talk? Can I say yeah, um, yeah. What, um, I it's okay. it's nothing to do with the play, is it? <laughs> it could be any play. It could be any play, it's but it's about it. you and your. Well, I don't know how I saw it. Yeah. Sort of you and you trying to figure out your own addictions mm. and obsessions. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think it's. it's like, it has, you know, like get, making sure you've got all these scanned yeah. and yeah. you know talking about that. Mm. No. I mean, I, I, I think I don't think it's. I may have. I sort of winced when I heard myself. I think I might have said the word obsession in one of them, but it's not. It's not. It's much, it's much milder than that, of course, the, the compulsion. But I feel it's more like a, it's more like sort of what I find I have to do as a what what you, the habits you get into as an artist when you're pursuing yeah right ideas. yeah it's yeah. a rather it's almost like the job, part of the job or something yeah that you you find yourself going down these pursuing an idea knowing having a little bit of faith now that there might be something at the end of this mm -hmm. um, kind of dogged pursuit of something that isn't yet really revealing itself as being interesting. It's not e it's not like a Easy. Um, it's not something that's evidently interesting at the start, and that's why you're. And hopefully, that's a good thing because then you can bring something new to it. Yeah. But but having said that, it's not. It couldn't be just any play because then I've found these significances. I mean, I may of course I can. You might find them in other plays, but the fact that there now seems to be there's a bit of it. What I was trying to illustrate too is this kind of mirroring where when I try and act the first bit of the first two characters in a way I've become bits of both of them um, and in fact it's the main character who's trying to tell his story I've become, I was trying to tell right. story too. so it weirdly seemed to become pertinent I'm not sure if that's what I projected onto it or what I've just latched onto or what was kind of in I'm sort of interested in what if it was there all the time so there's a bit of the sort of well, that, could, that, that could come from feasibly yeah sure but it's what you're, it's what you're attaching yourself to, yeah, yeah. and right. then and then publicly saying, yeah, this is what I'm attaching mm. myself mm. to, and then seeing what if I have tied those connections together and sort of offer that out there, whether other people are convinced by that sort of yeah. mesh, because it's equally it's an honest account, but it's sort of structured theatrically to hopefully have a um, have an intriguing mm. sort of network going on that you can pick over. You sort of haunt it by it because you know it's it's kind of that's in your life. I try. I'm, I don't want to label that too much, but that's sort of what I might be 
absurdly kind of suggesting that the adverts uh, the adverts are, are the kind of the ghost in the magazine and also are, are visitate, visiting me every Tuesday morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, Edwin, I'm going to read a little bit from your line from your biog now. Um, Edwin Burdis explores a unique and extravagant fusion between art, music and subcultural references, working across sound, sculpture, painting and drawing. His drawings and paintings often set the tone for performances. Um, and you've been presenting uh, daily, you've been presenting uh, The Fruit Machine, um, uh, in brackets of painting and opera. Mm. And uh, in Fruit Machine, um, it's, a, well, it's an opera presented with a painting, really, or a series of paintings. Um, and uh, again, I'm reading, quoting here, acts as a link between the striking and surreal imagery or the painting acts as a link between the striking material imagery and the music. Um, and uh, there is a story with, your, with what you're doing, and I think that's where, maybe that's where we should begin, is that it's, a, it's very much an opera. Yeah. Um, it's a painting that you perform in, to some extent behind or in proximity yeah. to, but what we're really listening to is an audio recording, yeah. in this case, which is an opera that you've made. Yeah. Um, and I, but I guess before we get into the methodology, I was just interested if you wanted to say a little bit more about the actual story of the opera. The story of this, this, op this opera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of have to, t I have to talk about the other operas that I've done. That's fine. Um, Mega Diary Pink Me Farm. Mega Diary Pink Farm. Mega Megadary Mega Dairy Beef Farm. The first one that I did was that I was making um, some paintings and I was listening to a lot of opera at the time and I really went to opera, I didn't know anything about opera. And how and what attracted me to it was that it was so serious, but it is completely absurd, like it's just stupid. Um, but then there's this sort of massive weight of seriousness smothered all around it. And and it's kind of sort of, um, it's like it's sort of throttled itself. Like all the joy I find, pers personal view, is that it's gone from it. So I went, I made an opera for these individual paintings. And the next thing was with uh, the fruit machine, was I was given a residency at Wising, a huge space. So I wanted to make an opera. But actually, this the story of the opera. Right? I wanted to make an opera about um, opening up a hole into another dimension, so that we can go into it and steal what's there. Uh, because this is kind of I'm just going to like this is this is complete. I can't swear anything. So this is complete rubbish. What I'm talking about, but it's um it's um basically I don't think that we're going to be travelling through space. <laughs> I think we're going to be able. Well, the only what, the only thing we, because of what we do, we find ways to get more. You mean humans? Yeah, what we are us, and we want more, and we have to have more. Um, whether you know, whether we try not to be like that or like we just that's what we do. And I, you know, and obviously there's this thing about space on this planet and this and that, but I just don't think that the the distances between here and somewhere else are just stupid. Like you just cannot. So. Taking that in account, I think, well, the only way is like, of course, you've got to open up the dimension. So that's what we do. But it's just, it's about this thing of like, just because we're like blind, like blind hunger, like just constantly having to take more. So that's what that was about. But it's, but it's, because I wanted, first I wanted to build the machine to do it. And obviously I couldn't build the machine because it wouldn't do it. And, I, and it just turned into this whole thing of like, of course it would be a fake, it would be a fake. It'd be an illusion. It'd be like smokes and mirrors, and for this thing to happen. So I sort of um, got lazy and decided just to do a massive painting of it, and then do it with sound to do the opera, which I've done. I think it did. And then I asked Heather Phillipson, who is an artist and a poet, to help with the libretto um, because we have similar, we have sort of conversations about the same sort of thing, like greed. And, and uh, fashion and sex and all sorts of things. So it's all sort of bumming, it's like a mush. And then there's a sort of 
and then there's like an axe trying to sort of, there's machines and slaves and trying to open up this, this hole and then you do open up this hole and then, and actually you do open up the hole and it's like, isn't this wonderful, isn't this beautiful, we've got all this space and we can have a, you know, a Tuscan villa for everybody and like, oh, but is it? So, is it yeah, so, so it's a sort of a story about ecology in a way, or, or the world, I kind of took it that the, 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 our world, the sort of idea of the fruit machine, and maybe we're kind of using that up. But as I now perhaps understand right. it, it's also about we're going into another dimension to yeah. start again. Yeah, well, you, to start again, well, yeah, start again, also just sort of bring our own shit, our own, our own problems, yes. you know, like. Um, so we would still have the same problems even if we went through it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to get too sort of right, but it's, it's like the internet, isn't it? It's like this other place that we can go to and abuse and abuse ourselves. And like, there's this other place that we can steal from. So that's, yeah, it's kind of like it's going to happen. Right? The, the internet's the beginning of it. But it's going to be like, it is going to, I think, it, it's because it, there's just not enough room. And on the, you, you sing, don't you? Yeah, I sing a little bit. Yeah. And Heather sings? Heather doesn't sing at all. Okay, so who's, which is the female voice on there? Uh, there's Emma, Emma Hart. Right, okay. She's okay. in it. Um, yeah. She was at the resi resi she was doing the uh, residency at the time I was doing it, yeah. and she's got a great voice. And uh, she's got a great att good attitude and, uh, for, for this. And uh, yeah, and it's mostly me singing. Yeah. I used to be a singer, so... Right, yes. Right. Didn't know that. Yeah. And um, why why opera, is it, I guess, is the mode? Just because that thing of, like, it's 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 a title that I can... Instead of, like, sound work or sound piece, right, yeah. it's, a, it's an opera, and immediately there's a sort of... At the same time, there's seriousness, and at the same time, there's just absolute humour, like yeah. stupidity with it. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, so like, the guy came in the other day and he said, uh, he was looking at the work and he said, oh, it's one one about our brother. And he was like, it's one for one for painting, it's kind of great. And uh, he said, uh, and I said, well, there's an opera that comes with it. And he goes, oh, should I know it? <laughs> and it's, no, <laughs> and, like, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know it. And do you know what I mean? It's like, it, it more automatically does this sort of, like, an opera. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I should perhaps explain that you have made a decision with this piece to perform, to well, to be with it. I, I don't know if we could say perform it. No, because I. But you're with it, aren't you? You're yeah. Like, when it happens, you are in the in the building. Yeah, I mean it's fine because we were talking. Me and Barry were talking about this thing about performance, and I've done a lot of performance, and I think I've kind of, without being melodramatic or theatrical, was I? I I've sort of. Uh, um, done with it. I'm done with it. Yeah, and it's sort of affected me in an odd way. So I don't really, I don't really like going in there anymore, and I don't really like putting myself. This is fine, but I don't like putting myself into that, stepping up onto that stage. And the stage could be a physical stage, but it could be you know, putting myself into that public space. I just can't do it anymore. And it, um, yeah, I don't like it where it, where it takes me. So, but at the same time, I am addicted to it. So. There is this sort of wanting to sort of be in it, but not be in it. Yeah. Be sort of part of it. And also making it an event. I like, I like, I like stuff that's an event, a moment, like a magic moment. Yeah. You know, it's like it's sort of, yeah, you can look at it, but then there's this sort of this energy happens and it talks to you. I mean, that's reminds me of another bit on your bio. It says uh, you have an ongoing compulsion to produce, and, and I, and I. Because I also know that you know you're planning to maybe make some more operatic work, and, and maybe there's a sort of I don't know if it's going to continue to be episodic, or you're going to continue to everything's going to reference everything else, or well maybe you change your mind, but you did mention to me that you were thinking of making a yeah no full no sure scale no, yeah with, I, I'm, with performers, and uh, you were going to maybe write and direct an opera. Yeah, I mean it's I because I work really fast as well. I mean this whole thing took six weeks to make, and it's, it's kind of. Like, I'm only beginning to sort of realise the sort of insanity of that. Um, and sort of, the next opera I want to take on take a year to do it, and it's going to be about England. So I want to travel England and meet up with people and make, make this thing happen. I, I, 
I'm, I'm working on that at the moment, how that's going to happen. It's quite a big thing. But uh, but it won't be you know it won't be it's not a com it's not a commentary or it's not a, it's not a survey it's it's going to be a, a personal view like, um, yeah and it's going to it's going to be a much again a much and it's a lot because the way the way I work as well a lot is that I don't I I record stuff first then edit it rather than having a composition first and you know, asking musicians to because I really like mistakes and odd things and, and also the editing thing with the computer is absolutely amazing because you can really quickly you can make all these wonderful things happen um, whereas you couldn't if it's all written down on a piece of paper given to someone and they have to do it. Oh, and also that's another thing about opera, I've been off the thing here, but another thing about opera is that what, through doing this I've started to, I, had, I was on a radio show about opera and finding myself sort of thrown into this quite deep rich, um, it's very serious world, and um, one guy that I've started to work with now is a singer, or was a singer, and the reason why he doesn't sing opera anymore is because of, um, he doesn't, like a lot of these operas were never recorded, so how do we know what they sound like, and particularly, like and this is one of the things he said, is that, you know, no one drank water, they drank alcohol. So would it really be the same every night? You know, it's like all this sort of stuff and the sort of the joy again, like that joy and sort of bringing the absurd back into. And like and this is what's really you're really good, really good at. But like the thing of humour and how you can underlining that in humour, you can tell you can, you can talk about something that's actually quite nasty. Mm -hmm. And um, as you do, as you do, yeah. And you know, and that's why I think with your you're talking about you and your neuroses or I don't know. I know, I know, but I, it's just but you can do that, yeah. can't you? And that's what I like. That's what I, what, what I want to do about England as well. Not Britain, because um, of my relationship with it. But that's the next, the next one. Yeah. You, well, we've been sort of skirted around obsession before. You're not obsessed with opera. It's just the current. No, era no, you sort of No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a title, isn't it? It's a title that I can. Say, but it can kind of open up doors as well, like you can, you know, and and I don't want to say this yet because it hasn't happened. But even sort of financially, you know, which means that I can actually get on with it. Is that as soon as this, it, it, it yeah, it has this different energy rather than sound work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, yeah, like you said, open doors. I mean, with um, Jesse Ash, one of the other artists that was here for four days, you know. I said to him, well, you know you've made a play now. Yeah. That wasn't really what he was necessarily, it wasn't his prime motive for what he ended up doing. He was sort of, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was actually good. Yeah. Like a good, you know, it's not like a, you know, kind of meta, a sort of, uh, you know, piece that you, know, you, know, you could basically perform as yeah. a traditional theatre set up. So um, and maybe you were thinking along those lines with opera. Yeah, I am. This next one anyway. Yeah, I am. And, and also being a bit more, like there will be, I, just, I don't want to get too involved in sort of storylines or like a linear storyline, obviously, because that would be too much work. <laughs> but um, like, uh, but there will be, you know, there's, a central, there's going to be a central character and sort of, and then wanting to take that actually, you know, wanting to do it live. Like people need directing other people. And this, I kind of idea of touring as well. I mean, tour because the wall's going to tour. Maybe. Um, it was going to. I mean, it's going to from here. It's going to Milton Keynes and then Reading, um, Milton Keynes Gallery, and then there's some other people and maybe the Baltic. But yeah, I mean, I wanted to. I wanted to take it to a lot more other places, a few more other places. But I want the next one to be. A, I'm playing. Yeah, I'm just playing with the different ideas at the moment. What would that be? I wanted to do it in food factories. Um, so why is that? Because uh, I, I talk a lot about food, because it goes with greed and our sort of, oops, or what um, I can't say the word, and, you know, like just more, moreism, and also the, the, the uh, abuse of that, like the way our food chain, you know, it's funny, it's like, I, I talk about all this stuff, but I, I eat loads of <laughs> shit meat and rubbish meat, and, you know, I, yeah, basically. But I, I, I worry about it, mm. and I don't really 
and it's, I guess it's a way of me trying to figure all this out. So a food factory would be, and I worked in a food factory, I worked in a, bakery, like a massive bakery, yeah. and it never left, that experience never left me, because it was pretty amazing seeing these machines yeah. make all this bread for really cheap bread. I had some time in the Hovis bakery in my youth. Right, right. Yeah. right. So okay. yeah. And it's just, you know, and it'd be great to sort of imagine all these machines and then the lights go out and then the, an office, this character comes out standing on one of the machines and starts going on about sausages. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and, uh, um, I don't know how we're doing for time. But I, think we've got time. I was just going to say, because yeah. you said that about this play, Jesse's play is, all, is almost good enough to go into a theatre. Yeah, well, I like, don't um, I don't know you're saying. Probably going to watch that. Yeah. It's almost. But, no, I think you said it was. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 I agree. It's, it's, I was thinking there too, because all the elements are here, but of course that's not, I mean, we were talking yesterday about, you know, we all, all three of us are formed as in a gallery space, yeah. and that gives you, that gives you lots of license, and hopefully, because mm -hmm. you've stepped, you've stepped out of the lobby of the Arnofini into gallery one of the Arnofini, you kind of, I mean, you step off the harbour side into the gallery, um, into the Arnofini, you, you know you're now, you've got to start playing those game. you've got to start thinking, I mean, audience members, I mean, and beholden into the artist, to so get to play, it's not a. It, we we've got we get. I don't know what it quite what that is, but you get to. The audience has got to step up and be able to question everything, and as as is the producer of it, and that's a really nice format that might get deadened by putting it back into the theatre that is. It's yeah. it's not even it thought so about well. for. Um, and there's absolutely no qualitative comparison I'm making yeah. there. But um, but that's how that's that's what I really enjoy about. Making, mm. uh, putting it into these types of spaces because you know, it's not entertainment. Like you're not, it's not. You know, you, you can do it. So oh, I know this is obvious, but it, it, it's something that it's only it was recently got to me. Why I do it? It's because I don't have any of this sort. Of, I don't have all those other sort of commitments. You know, um, which yeah, yeah. I mean, I often find myself saying. Uh, Arnolfini's not in the business of entertainment, as it were, but then, right, we're somewhere, mm. yeah, it's there, um, for lots of different reasons, and, and obviously these types of works are kind of, on some level, um, engaging with that. Mm. But why would that be a bad thing? Sorry? Why would that be a bad thing? Why would it be a bad thing if we were in the business of entertainment? Mm. Um, I can only, I can only yeah. say, from my point of view, is that, I did, I, I, I've worked in the entertainment business, <laughs> and I didn't, and I didn't, I, and I, it was bad for me. In what way? Um, because of um, there's, well, there's not much freedom, you know. It's like you, it's things that are absolutely magical yeah. and wonderful. Yeah. You know, I, I think yeah. I'm not. There isn't that room. There. You, know, you have to do a set. There's only a small amount of room that you can go against. You know, and that's it. As soon as you cross over those borders, it's like people just don't run up. Whereas, hopefully, and I think that these types of spaces, you're going in there and not expecting that. You know, it's like a So then, is it like the idea of convention rather than the idea of something being like entertaining or not entertaining? So that maybe Arnold thing is in the business of showing unconventional things. Yeah. Rather I, mean, than I should probably just yeah. <laughs> clarify is that we are in the business of audiences. Mm, yeah. You know, but yeah. also our kind of you know the plaque on the door says, you know, yeah, exactly what you're saying, kind of uh, I guess, you know, experimental practice. That's sort of that sort of the, the, you know, somewhere between those uh, you know yeah. posts. And you can it's easy to confuse kind of entertainment with satisfaction or something. You know, if I was delivering my performances and nobody looked entertained, nobody looked well, I felt like everyone was going out and half, then that would be yeah. um, you know, in some respect there's, there's elements of that I enjoy uh, or, or I'm not fearful of. But um, you know, it it'd be it would be if you were looking to repel people with your practice that would be something that would be quite unusual rather than the industry standard. Cool. Also, as well, it's like it's another thing that I. It's kind of it's kind of safe. Kind of, it's safe. <laughs> it's, going, it's safe, isn't it? It's safe comfortable. for me. It's safe. I'm sure. I, I have had people say to me, yeah. like, well, you know, 
doing in their other world. I mean, it would definitely test you to do the opera in the, in the real opera. Yeah, and I think that's worth doing. Talk about that. Yeah. Um, so, thank you, Edward Davis. Thank you, Barry Sykes. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. much.